Has London now got a problem with rough sleepers from Central and Eastern Europe? You speak English? Westminster Council believes it might have. It's basically a village. It's like a tent village. Saying numbers have almost tripled in a year. We know that this area is predominantly made up of Central and Eastern Europeans. It says some people can be drunken and violent, and we were threatened as we tried to film one group on the Strand. Right? What the f*** you do? What the f*** you film? You like your camera? You like your glasses? No, the f*** off. Next time. People that just try to attack you have been drinking all day. And until we can persuade the government to give us back the powers that we once had and get the border agency back on the streets, this is going to continue. If you want to visit some of the places where people sleep rough in 21st century London, you have to get off the beaten track. Hello. Katerin from Romania lives here. He's a builder and says it saves him money so he can send more home to his family. Rent, you know, it's expensive and money are going home. We spent a few weeks visiting rough sleeping sites and found several similar stories. People putting up with all this because they hope for a better life, even if that might be an impossible dream. When was the last time you had a job? Uh, three months ago. And how much money have you got on you now, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> if you want to show me, one pound in something. How long you live here? One year? Two years. Be looking for a job. Until just over a year ago, immigration officials were able to remove European migrants persistently sleeping rough, sending them back home. But they can no longer do this after the High Court decided that the policy was discriminatory and broke EU freedom of movement rules. Why not go back home to Poland? No, 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 no. Now, if he wants to stay, he can, even if it means living like this. But Westminster Council says something has got to change. The facts speak for themselves. The numbers are through the roof. It's not just about scooping them up and telling them to go home. It's about understanding that this is no way to live. But there must be rats. Council leader Nikki Aiken says in one year, the number of Central and Eastern European rough sleepers in Westminster has almost tripled. It's basically a village. It's like a tent village. And we've got absolutely no powers. So tonight, we could not do anything about this. This is near Charing Cross. And Nikki says her staff can no longer keep things under control because all joint operations with the Home Office have stopped. The border agency and the police would have worked with us and we would have done an operation and if they weren't allowed to be here or they weren't exercising their treaty rights, the EU treaty rights, then the border agency would have had the powers to scoop them up and send them home, basically. When immigration officials were working with Westminster, it's thought around 250 rough sleepers were removed. We're waking everybody up along here. No one's going to be allowed to sleep here tonight. Rob White, the head of Westminster's rough sleeping service, says he's been left effectively powerless. Previously, we had the ability to say you will have to return home. Now we just have to say uh, we would like you to return home. Uh, and ultimately, of course, people choose to return to the streets instead. Westminster says if nothing changes, the numbers will just continue to rise. And it wants the government to get tough. Well, somewhere that already has is Denmark. In its capital, Copenhagen, the Danish government says more than 100 camps have been removed. We had a big problem with foreigners coming here, making camps uh, in the parks and the local places. Police were given new powers and rough sleepers arrested, jailed and even deported. Uh, foreigners from other countries, mostly Eastern European countries, who's now is uh, out of the country and cannot camp here anymore. Do you think Lambda can learn anything from your example here? Well, um, if they can, we are of course willing to give all our examples and our legislation uh, to, to London. So is this an example worth following? A group that provides legal assistance to rough sleepers arrested in Copenhagen says no.
they're criminalizing rough sleeping. They're criminalizing homelessness and being poor instead of finding solution. When people come to England or Denmark or Sweden or Germany, they don't come to you necessarily as much as they flee from somewhere else. And back in London, a human rights charity which helped bring the court case that stopped the Home Office removing rough sleepers says it was the right decision and shouldn't be changed. I think that a policy that has already been found to be unlawful uh, and discriminatory should not be revisited. But Westminster Council says its latest count found 128 non-UK EEA nationals rough sleeping. And the council says its staff are struggling to deal with this. I may have a room for you tonight if you wanted to stay in it. Here, an elderly man from Poland who has a heart condition is offered temporary accommodation but turns it down. Uh, it's your own room, you have your own bedroom with a locked door and then we can try and find out about your situation tomorrow. Would you stay in a room tonight? No? No. Okay. So you cannot sleep here, okay? We turned down the offer of a room and follow-up healthcare support as well. There is good healthcare in Poland, there is good housing, there is good social services. Uh, he's choosing to sleep on the streets of London instead. And it's not just Westminster Council that's calling for something to be done about this issue. As we travelled around London visiting other rough sleeping sites, we were shown a road on an industrial estate where business owners are very unhappy. Here, no one sleeps on the street, but we were told in parked cars every night. We filmed secretly at dawn as some people woke up. The business owners here have asked not to be identified because they fear possible reprisals. We're so fed up with it. I would say it's up to 10 cars, maybe three or four in a car. They leave feces in the park and they don't care if you're standing there watching them or not. They just do it. I've lost 50% of my takings because customers don't want to see this and are scared. My business will be destroyed if this continues. Enfield Council says it understands the concerns and will take necessary action against antisocial behaviour. The Met Police says it has assisted the council with enforcement action in the park. But what about Westminster's call for a tougher approach? The Home Office says the government is engaging with the council over the issue of rough sleeping in the borough.